Here's a cool method for estimating calculations. What you do is you round everything to one significant figure. Let's have an example to show you what I mean. If a question asks you something like, work out the value of, and then it will give you a calculation. And watch how we do it. We're going to get a rough answer to a calculation simply by rounding to one significant figure, or one SF for short. Here's our calculation. 31.2, take away 9.87, and then let's divide that by, let's say, 4.96 times by 2.03. Okay. Here's how the trick works. We're going to round everything to one significant figure. Now, one significant figure basically just means one number that's not a zero. See that 31.2? What would that become? Many students think it would become 31, but we want just one significant figure. One number that's not a zero. So it's going to be 3, 0, 30. Notice there's only one number that's not a zero. So three zero, take away the 9.87 rounds to 10, because it's closer to 10 than to 9. What does the bottom line become? 4.96 would round to 5, and 2.03 rounds to 2. Let's work those out. 30 minus 10 is 20. And 5 times 2 is indeed 10. And what is 20 divided by 10? 20 divided by 10. If you're not sure, you can knock off the zeros. Bish, bash, bosh. 2 divided by 1 is just 2. So this equals 2. Let's do a slightly harder estimate question. How about if we had something like a 3-digit number? So like a 709, take away 194, divided by 0.53, something like that. This will test whether we're rounding to one significant figure. 709, what's the one number that would become with just zeros around it? That would become a 700. And the 194, if you round that to one number, and one number only, it would actually become a 200. Notice it wouldn't become a 100 because the 190 rounds to 200 rather than 100 because it's closer. What about that 0 0.53? Now here's where most students make a big mistake. They round that to 0 or to 1, usually to 1. But actually, when you're rounding to one significant figure, the first number you need to look at is the number at the front that's not a zero. So there's a zero, but we don't actually consider that. That's not a significant figure. We consider the five. Any zero at the beginning of a number is not significant. So we look at the five. Now the five doesn't round because next to it is a three, but it's still a five. So down here would be 0 0.5, not a 1 or a 0. Let's work that out. 700 take away 200 is 500. And how would we do 500 divided by 0 0.5? A lot of students might struggle with this, but I recommend to get rid of the decimal, you can simply times by 10 to top and bottom. That would work in this case but there might be an even easier one. How about if we just times by 2 to top and bottom? What would happen? Well, the top bit, you probably agree, would be okay. 500 times by 2 is 1,000. But what would happen when you do 0 0.5 times by 2? 0 0.5 times by 2 is just 1. And 1,000 divided by 1, in fact, any number divided by 1 is just itself. So 1,000 divided by 1 is just 1,000. 
Notice how when we multiply to the bottom line, we had to multiply by the same amount to the top line, otherwise we change the fraction. Okay, one last example. I think we're beginning to get the hang of it. How about 3.86 plus 5.09 divided by something like 0 0.2. So 0 0.21. Let's go crazy. 0.215. What do we do? Well, what does the 3.86 round to, to one significant figure? It rounds to 4. And the 5.09 rounds to 5. What about the 0.215? The closest one would be 0, wouldn't it? Well, remember, we round to one significant figure, so we don't count the 0 at the front. At the front. We only count the 2. That's the first significant number. So what is that 0 0.2 round to? Well, because there's a 1 after it, you look to the right and there's a 1, and that won't round the 2. To give you a clue, it would only round the 2 if it was a 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. Any other number, like a 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, and it's not going to round. 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9 would round up to 3. So it stays at 0 0.2, but it doesn't change to a 0 or something. 4 plus 5 is 9. Oops. <laughs> 4 plus 5, we can't estimate to 8, it would be 9. And what about 9 divided by 0 0.2? What was that trick I showed you to get rid of the decimals? We wouldn't times by 2 this time because we still have a decimal down there. But how about if we times by 10? Watch what happens when we times by 10. You can always get rid of one decimal place by timesing by 10. In fact, you can almost always get rid of decimals just by timesing by a 10 or a 100 or something like that. Let's times by 10. And times by 10. And what do we get? The top line, 9 times 10, becomes 90. The bottom line, 0 0.2 times 10. 0 0.2 times 10, you simply shift the decimal place, and it becomes a 2. 0 0.3 times 10 is a 3. 0 0.6 times 10 is a 6. So 0 0.2 times 10 is a 2. And watch how much easier it became. 90 divided by 2 is indeed 45. Now there are three very quick estimates we did simply by rounding to one significant figure.